The post-mortem of former Tata Sons chairman Cyrus Mistri, who died in a road accident on Sunday, has been conducted at the JJ Hospital in Mumbai. Cyrus Mistri was killed in a car crash in Maharashtra's Apalghar. He was just 54 years old. His death has sent shockwaves through the country. Mistri, who succeeded Ratan Tata as chairman of Tata Sons, but was later ousted in India's most high-profile boardroom coup, is said to have died on the spot. And he was uh, travelling uh, from Gujarat's Udwada, where he'd gone to visit a fire temple, uh, back to Mumbai in a Mercedes, which hit the road divider at the Charoti area of Palghar. That's 135 kilometers uh, from Mumbai. He was sitting in the back seat. Seat. Uh, pictures from the accident site showed the mangled remains of the silver Mercedes. Along with Mistri, Jahangir Pandol, uh, Dr. Nahita Pandol and Darais Pandol were present in the car. Jahangir Pandol, brother of Darais Pandol, is the other person who died in the accident. He was sitting in the back seat along with Cyrus Mistri. According uh, to what NDTV has learned from police sources, it's likely uh, that the two were not wearing seat belts. It was Anahita who was at the wheel of the car and lost control while overtaking. And the police sources say they're trying to retrieve data from the car. Let's go across to NDTV Sohit now for more. And Sohit, so the post-mortem has taken place. Uh, when will the funeral take place? And also tell us what the police are saying. Uh, well, yes, the post-mortem uh, happened in the, to the morning itself when the uh, mortal remains reached the JJ Hospital in Mumbai. And officially, the hospital has handed over the bodies to the families. But the families have requested the hospital to keep the bodies at the hospital for some time as relatives are yet to reach Mumbai. So once the relatives reach Mumbai, only after then we can uh, give more details on when will the, uh, when will the uh, funeral uh, take place. So that totally depends on uh, the family members of Cyrus Mystery. So that is one thing uh, that needs to be uh, noted. And uh, we are trying to get more details from the family on when exactly are they planning or what exactly are their plans. Uh, when will they be taking the body from the JJ hospital? On the other hand, uh, the police, yes, they are investigating the matter. The forensic team and the RTO officials were at the spot last night to collect the samples to change the sequence of events that led to the accident. The police is also working with the RTO officials and the car is being inspected. Uh, all high-end vehicles have a chip, which is similar to a black box. Police is trying to retrieve data from the vehicle too. As of now, it looks like due to overspeeding, the car wasn't under control, which led to the accident. The CCTV visuals are being checked too. And as you said, Gagi, Cyrus Mistri and Jahangir were on the back seat of the car and the police says that they were wearing seat belts. The airbags present at the back seat did not open. However, the investigation is still going on. All right. And if you can tell us, you know, what do we know about this particular road? It was near a bridge where the accident took place and uh, the initial reports are saying that it was during uh, an overtaking of another vehicle that uh, control was lost. Uh, well, uh, yes, as per uh, the prima facie, the police is also saying that this was due to overspeeding and the car was not under control. This happened in Charoti Naka area, which is in Palghar. And uh, over there, uh, over Surya Bridge, there is a, there is a river, uh, there is a bridge over Surya River, where uh, this accident happened. And the officials are present there uh, right now and they are investigating the matter. And uh, they uh, are trying to find out more. Uh, and uh, the officials uh, are also in touch with the other two members who were injured. And uh, they are trying to get more details from them as well. All right, uh, Sohit, thanks so much for joining us uh, with those details. We're also joined by Siddharth Vinayak Patankar, Editor-in-Chief Car and Bike, uh, you know, to understand more about uh, car safety. And Siddharth, so at this point, what do we know about, the, uh, you know, in terms of the safety uh, in this car? It was a Mercedes, one would have expected, you know. Uh, again, for laymen, if you could explain to us, it's such a tragic accident and such a shocking one. Uh, we know that there are airbags. There's also information preliminary that perhaps uh, uh, Cyrus Mistri, who was sitting in the back seat, was not wearing a seat belt. Um, Dagi, yes, it is indeed very tragic. And, you know, I want to sort of uh, firstly quickly just say that we have to wait to see what the forensics finally do talk about in this particular right. case. The model you're talking about is the GLC. It's a car that does come with a fair amount of safety that's preloaded in terms of its structure. And if you look at the kind of visuals that you that you are showing right now on your screens, in fact, uh, you know, it, it shows that the car's integrity in terms of its basic body shell and the cabin has actually been maintained. So this is, of course, prima facie from what I'm looking at. 
You can also see curtain airbags that have got deployed at the back. So, you know, I want to quickly sort of mention that it visually seems that the curtain airbags did deploy. But the point I want to make is that this is a frontal impact. In the case of a frontal impact, if an individual is not wearing their seatbelt, they will be thrown forward. Uh, a curtain airbag only comes into play or, or helps, let's say, when you are uh, moving from side to side in an impact situation and not forward. In the case of a forward movement, yes, it would help in terms of cushioning the individual. But for that, they would have to be restrained in their seat with the seat belt. So really what happens in the case of a frontal impact is that if a person is not wearing their, uh, their seat belt, they essentially become a projectile. And if you look at the front passenger uh, side seat, uh, I'm told that Mr. Mistry was sitting diagonally opposite uh, at the back behind the driver. Uh, so if you look at the seat in front of where he was sitting, uh, from what I have heard from, from my sources, um, it looks like the whole seat has got pushed forward, and that likely uh, happened because he was thrown forward. Uh, having uh, said that, we'll wait and see what happens in terms of you know ascertain, ascertaining the facts. If he had, in fact, been wearing his uh, seatbelt, then, of course, there's a whole big question mark in terms of what has happened. Uh, otherwise, of course, yes, not wearing the seatbelt is really one of the... The saddest thing that happens, you know, most people don't wear their seatbelts in the rear seats. Uh, most people feel like it's okay not to. Uh, so really, this is not a question of airbags if the seatbelts were not in use. Gargi. Right. And, and Siddharth, you know, uh, we've done campaigns on road safety here at NDTV, but uh, wearing of the seatbelts, this is something that we are meant to do. But again, it's not a common practice, unfortunately. In fact, I must tell you that a lot of us have been petitioning uh, Minister Gadkari exactly to say that, you know, it should become law. Just like wearing front seat belts is required or mandated, uh, and you have an audio warning in most cars now. In fact, by law, you need that. If you don't wear your seat belt, the car will keep ringing or reminding you, either visually or through an audio warning. Uh, we keep saying that that same should be done for the rear seats. In fact, the other problem in India is that the middle passenger, in case there is a third passenger in the back, very often in, in uh, you know majority of the cars on the, uh, the market, you don't have a three-point seat belt, which means a harness that holds you from the shoulder down. Uh, it's just a lap belt for the middle passenger. That, again, can be dangerous. So these are some of the things that, yes, do need to be taken into consideration. In fact, when uh, we had uh, Union Minister Gopinath Munde also succumbing to uh, you know his uh, uh, accident on the roads of Delhi, at the time, the same question had come up, that, you know, why aren't we imposing rear seat belt uh, usage? This is something that, you know, I agree that just simply having a law is not going to maybe change practices. But yes, we need more awareness around it and certainly, certainly on the highway, even more so at higher speeds, even within the city, this just becomes absolutely necessary, Dargi. Right. And Siddharth, if you could just explain uh, this, uh, what curtain airbags are, this, these are the airbags at the back of the car for the back passengers, but they are there on the side. And so uh, given that this was a frontal impact, it wouldn't have helped? Uh, essentially, yes. In layman speak, uh, you know, you don't have an airbag that deploys into the face of a passenger in a sense uh, at the back. Some cars do have it, and these are, of course, very high-end cars. But regulation on most cars is that you will have, uh, you know, if you look at injury patterns or if you look at accident patterns globally, uh, more injury occurs when you have a side impact or even in the case of a front impact, a passenger at the rear being thrown into the side of the car or the side, let's say, the you know glass or other elements uh, impacting them. That is where a curtain airbag comes into play. So it's, it's along the headline of the, uh, of the vehicle. It deploys uh, like a, literally like a curtain. And if you look at some of the visuals that are on the screen, you see this bluish green element that appears to be the curtain airbag. Of course, I'll have to sort of confirm this uh, from this individual case. But it, it basically protects the head and neck region from any kind of impact, especially from you know, things like glass or, or any exterior protrusions. Uh, that is the role of a, of a curtain airbag. It's not meant to sort of hold you back in your seat. The only thing that can do that is the seat belt. Gargi. That's right. And, and so that finally, uh, as you said, this is a Mercedes and usually, you know, these high and luxury cars are you're more prone to speeding in them. And unfortunately, many Indian roads are just not conducive uh, to, uh, you know, speeding cars and then the kind of obstructions that can suddenly come in the way this car crashed into a divider. That's right. And if you look at the kind of, uh, you know, reports we've got about this particular spot, uh, you essentially have three lanes that suddenly go into two lanes. And so uh, the driver, whether at high speed or otherwise, will have to make a very quick snap judgment in terms of whether they want to get into the service road uh, on the old bridge or into the uh, two lanes on the new bridge. So, you know, in that situation, things, that's where things go wrong, you know, and this is exactly why we have certain things that are imposed by law. Uh, if the car, from what I've heard from my sources, was traveling at 150 kilometers per hour, 
it was well over speed limit and you know in that situation obviously an impact would be a lot more fatal than had it been dri driving a little bit slower rather